Today's dram is made with 100% malted barley. It's been aged for at least three years and was matured in a pretty extensive cask maturation strategy by a world-renowned whiskey legend. However, it is not scotch. Stay tuned for today's Camp Dram. Deviating from Scotch whiskey, today we're going to talk about American single malt whiskey, specifically Virginia Distillery Company and their courage and conviction. This particular bottle is batch two, the Dr. Jim Swan version. This bottle was sent to me by Curiata, an online retailer that sells artisan crafted spirits that are usually hard to find. Check the link in the description and take a look at what their offerings are. They sent me this bottle quite a while ago and far before I even started this YouTube channel. And my opinions either on this bottle or any other bottle are my own. I speak my mind. Just ask my husband. So let's talk about the Virginia Distillery Company. And it's um, located in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. It's a beautiful part of the United States. It was founded in 2011 by Dr. George G. Moore. And he was an Irish born American businessman who had this vision of making really good whiskey in the US. And now his family has taken that over and created this flagship expression of courage and conviction. Have the courage of your convictions. That was a saying that Dr. Moore was known for. And so they've taken that and built this whiskey and named it after him, Courage and Conviction. So while Courage and Conviction is made very similar to the way Scotch whiskey is made, um, that's not always the same for other American single malts. So let's talk about that for a bit. In Scotland, for a whiskey to be called a malted whiskey, it must be made with 100% malted barley. But in the US, things are a little different. There are no standards or major rules for American single malt whiskey. So therefore, the mash bill can be a little different. This is 100% malted barley. To be American single malt, you only have to have 51% of your mash bill be malted barley. So other grains can be in there and still get the label American single malt whiskey. There are no standards as of yet. However, a group, the American Single Malt Whiskey Commission, did come together in 2016 to outline six guidelines that they would like to see fall to define American single malts. And here they are. Made from 100% malted barley, distilled in entirely one distillery, mashed, distilled, and matured all in the United States, matured in oak cask no greater than 700 liters each, distilled no more than 160 proof or 80 ABV, and bottled no less than 80 proof or 40 ABV. And notice there isn't a guideline on maturation because the maturation in the United States is very different than Scotland. Our climate is quite different. And even though this is nestled in the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains, it still gets much hotter there than it does perhaps in the highlands of Scotland. So maturation is going to happen faster. Have you had American single malt whiskeys? What did you think of them? And which one is your favorite? Let's talk about the casking for this particular bottle. It's quite interesting. This is batch blended with three different types of cask maturation in this proportion. 50% is bourbon. So X bourbon cask specifically from Kentucky were used. 25% comes from sherry cask, and that could be Fino, Oloroso, or Pedro Jimenez. And then another 25% is cuvee casks. 
So they took these red wine French cuvee casks and gave them an STR treatment or shaved, toasted, and recharred. They broke down those casks after the wine was removed, sent them over, and then shaved the inside of the cask, toasted them, and then recharred them, and then put distillate in that to mature. So 25% cuvee is in here as well. So let's get into this dram. Courage and Conviction is released in batches. This particular bottle is batch two, named for Dr. Jim Swan, and we'll talk about him in a bit. This expression comes in at 46 ABV. It's non-chill filtered, no color added. It's been matured for at least three years. Bravo, folks. This comes as it is, so good job on that. The color is light yellow, it's oily. I get a lot of malt up front right away. And kind of a sweetness that's more candy, like, um, like a buttery caramel. Almost like those Werther's original candies, I guess. And it's very bright. It's it's light. I mean, at 46%, I'm get, getting overwhelmed by an alcohol smell. I'm getting just a hint of like banana as well. Some scotches are even like that. And just a hint of chocolate. Hmm. Let's go for a taste. Okay, got a sweet forward in the mouth, kind of sour on the sides. There's a little back heat coming in, a little spice there. Mouthfeel is rounded, not sharp. Again, I get bright. I get um, it's not heavy. So the the appearance looked pretty oily but you're but this is not heavy this is not laying heavy um, at all not overtly oily taste the sweetness doesn't hold on the candy it's more fresh sure than that it's like a fresh fruit almost like a fresh cut strawberries or even like a granny smith apple because there's a bit of sour tartness coming along and but yeah fresh not it's what it isn't is like jammy like a natural sugar taste and not artificial and the finish is lingering there's a hint of menthol or something like that going on but kind of a ginger cinnamony type spice that just kind of hangs there for a bit. Very, very pleasing. Slightly dry. Might have to do with the sherry and the red wine. If you think about those three different types of cask, the bourbon is most prominent, you know. Um, I'm getting most of that. That combined with the sherry, I think is probably responsible for that light sweetness. Um, the dryness may be coming from the wine um, of the cuvee. And definitely probably the spice is coming from the, the both Spanish and French oak influence. This is very good whiskey. I have to tell you, in researching this bottle, the Virginia Distillery Company is completely transparent about what they do to get this bottle of whiskey. Uh, if you go online to batch.info, you are going to see any and everything there is documented about how this bottle is made. Take a look and you'll see details about milling and fermentation, an analysis of the cuts made of the distillate, the number of casks used along with their fill and their dump dates, even this incredible graph of the temperature swings between the maturation. I mean, just truly incredible information and get you thinking if they're putting all of this out they're pretty proud of their whiskey and you know what they should be 
I've had a smattering, not a whole lot, but a good number of American single malt expressions. And some of them have left me kind of perplexed. They were pretty aggressive, some were astringent, some just you could tell their youth was shining through the spirit. And I didn't really particularly care for some of them. Because of that, I've struggled with comparing the American single malts to a scotch, except for this bottle. This is good. And this has got me thinking. I feel confident that this courage and conviction at a minimum of three years of maturation time could hold up against an eight or 12 year old scotch. That's crazy. Three years, eight to 12. Again, the climate has a lot to do with that. Things mature over here a whole lot faster than they are over in Scotland. And given that, if you like Deanston 12 or Mark Lock 12, you're gonna really like this bottle. And true confession time, I think this actually edges out both of those from my palette. The Moore family seem to have set things up to make some really good whiskey at the Virginia Distillery Company. And in doing so, early on, they got the help from Dr. Jim Swan. He is described as the Einstein of whiskey and the ultimate whiskey troubleshooter. Dr. Swan was a fellow at the Royal Society of Chemistry. He spent a lifetime in whiskey research, especially in cast maturation and the effect Wood had on whiskey production. It was under his guidance that the whiskeys that create courage and conviction were developed. He advised many worldwide distilleries on startups, including the inaugural release of Nick Nian and the beginning of Kilhoman. Dr. Swan is an absolute legend. I've left a link in the description of a bio on him by the Masters of Mob blog. Have you had this expression or anything else from the Virginia Distillery Company? They've just released three different maturations of single of bourbon, sherry, and cuvee. So know that all American single malt whiskey are not the same, nor is scotch really, right? But if you've tried American single malt and it really didn't do much for you, I would suggest to take a taste of this and I think you're really going to appreciate what they're doing there and how good this dram is. And no, it's not scotch, but they're making it in the spirit, so to speak. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, make some comments, and if you haven't already, subscribe, hit notifications so you'll know when we're going to have the next camp dram. Check out more camp drams at the end of this video. And until next time, Sláinte, y'all.